Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Geek Out. As always, I'm your host, allergy-ridden Max Hartley, and I'm joined here with Talon. That's me, without allergies. Lucky, Julian. Oh, hi. And Mason. What's up? Hey, how have you guys been? <laughs> so, there's nothing pretty, to complain pretty about. Pretty good. I mean, pretty I good. have plenty of stuff to complain about, but that's not that kind of podcast, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm surviving. Well, let's just say uneventful. And leave it at that. <laughs> you know, oddly, it's oddly satisfying to hear uneventful. I think after yeah, right? the last year we had, uneventful is probably like the best thing to hear after a while. It does True. feel like that, yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, we're here to talk about some geeky, gamey stuff that we saw in the week. And let's go ahead and get started right on into that with Mason. Oh, man, Mason. put me on the spot. Yeah, um, I'm, it. I'm kind of cheating. I have two. But I'll start, I'll start. I also the, have two. I'll start with the arguably smaller of the two. But nice. Um, I've been geeking out over the release of Pyra and Mithra in Smash Ultimate. Hey. I never played Xenoblade Chronicles two. I've never played the first one, but something about the way these char characters (plural) um, are designed is just so fun to play. The way you switch between them is very creative. Um, kind of like we saw with Zelda and Sheik and melee but it's zelda and chic but done actually well done better yeah there's a reason oh. to switch between the two now um Ooh. so mithra is a faster character she can rack up some damage pretty quickly um and then pyra can come in and smash uh, yeah <laughs> and i'm off the screen so <laughs> mithra it's... has low kill potential to put it yeah in it's harder to... game turn it's definitely a lot harder to kill with mithra but i've just been having a lot of fun with them and smash ultimate's kind of like my comfort game so whenever i'm when I'm finding myself with some downtime, that's what I boot up, and I've just been playing so much of Pyra and Mithra. To 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 like kind of put into perspective about how out of the loop of Nintendo stuff I am, I didn't even know that we were getting more characters for Smash. <laughs> There's oh two yeah. More. There's constantly a hype cycle going on around. I, I, I thought we were done. <laughs> what was the, what was the last one? The no. last. The uh, last. The last one was Sephiroth. Who I was oh, very okay. excited about. From FF7. I told you guys okay. about. And that was that probably uh, gave us the best meme format ever of Sephiroth with it, what looked like Mario being stabbed by Sephiroth, even though he oh, was. Mario's it. been stabbed by tons of the newcomers. <laughs> no, it's really he funny. Stabbed, he got stabbed it's by so Ridley. funny. He got stabbed uh, by they they love to imply great harm to Mario and then just be like, no, he's fine. <laughs> Jk, I do remember um, Sephiroth being announced, uh, but like, it it feels like to me that um the plant uh piranha plant was like the last one that came out but no, I know that was that, the like, first the lc i know character. but I, that was like a year ago so <laughs> no that oh, was no, that's that's christmas that was 2018 2018 yeah. good came lord came out that came out like very like close to launch didn't it as like an apology <laughs> for something out, that went no, wrong no mm -hmm. it came out oh. at launch oh, or right. it was announced at launch and was like hey guys we're giving you a free DLC character because we want to set the tone for these DLC characters. That's and right. the tone is we don't owe you anything and don't ask <laughs> us for anything. We're going to put Piranha Plant in the game. And the then they've given us nine more characters since add. then. <laughs> There's yeah. nine more characters? No, yeah, see, just to kind I, of I run don't even through know. I don't even know. Seven. Just so so it goes. Quick, oh, there's going. Got, it goes. Joker, okay. Hero, Banjo and right. Kazooie, Joker. Terry, Byleth, Min Min, Steve and Alex, Minecraft, Sephiroth, and now Pyra and Mithra. And hmm. Banjo and Kazooie, the only ones that matter, and the rest can go away. It's fine. <laughs> <laughs> that was a self bleep of an explicit. Uh, so <laughs> I mean. Um, <laughs> No, so, yeah, I, so we've got about I, two more that um, they've said will be out by the end of the year. Um, but so based I, on based on the timing, so we got Sephiroth about two months ago. Um, and then we got, okay. so then we got Pyramithra. So probably two to three months we'll see another one pop up. But If yeah. you can't tell, I don't play Smash. <laughs> and no. I play way I, too much of it. I'm really, like I'm really things. glad. I'm really glad, Mason, that you're here. Because last time I brought up Smash Bros. news, literally no one else cared. <laughs> no oh, one else no. on the We're podcast like, oh, yeah. even That's cared. a crime. <laughs> well, Smash is just cool because it. it's like Smash is cool because it's like like Joker from Persona Five getting the very first DLC slot was 
amazing because never been on a um, Nintendo platform aside from there was a puzzle game on the DS or something. Yeah, exactly. Um, still waiting for that to come to Switch. Persona 5, please, <laughs> Atlas. Oh, wow, that would be amazing. That'd be amazing. If we got Royal on there. Oh. But, so it's just cool to see like different um, gaming icons being celebrated. Like Terry Minecraft from SNK Steve. was... Minecraft Steve, Terry from I, SNK, and yeah, and one of the one of the ones that um, I know people were upset about, um, like if if it would come to be, is Master Chief being in there. But I think that'd be really cool too. Yeah, right? I wouldn't mind Master, Master Chief. Chief he's only... a, like he's like explicitly de- like a Microsoft icon. So mm-hmm. the only problem with Master Chief is we already have Solid Snake and. Solid Snake um, is excuse me. Solid Snake and Master Chief are two very different people. They are very Agreed. different people. But if you were to try and translate Master Chief into Super Smash Bros, I feel like there would be a hard time differentiating him and his move set from Solid Snake. What? Okay, I, I, I disagree. Something work. I disagree. I if think they can make if they can make the villager from Animal Crossing work, they can make anything work. Yeah, true. I, I think fair. Master Chief <laughs> fair point. Be a lot less like bendy. I don't know if that makes sense, but uh, he would do a lot more just running around and shooting. Um, whereas Snake has like, you have to plan, you can set mines and stuff. I can I, almost I see think... Master, I can what see Master Chief thing? working similar to like Mega Man. Yeah, that's what he has that's his more gun. I mean. I, I'm more interested in seeing the Among Us character in there. <laughs> That would be so cool. Then you, like, like, then you need to hear, then you need to play. It. You need to play uh, Rivals of Ether because Rivals of Ether oh, yeah. is basically indie Smash Bros. And they have a community that. tab where everyone can make their own characters and get them like let other people play them. And you better believe there's half a million versions of the imposter on the Rivals of Ether community tab. <laughs> yep, I have that in my wish list. Actually, I want to double check that. I, de- I have that in my wish list. It's great yeah. for just messing around with mods. When you get it, fight me. <laughs> I, I can't wait to lose, honestly. <laughs> I'm excited. Oh, All right. Man. Well, we'll yeah. play volleyball. Now, that was your small topic, Mason. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing small here. Well, you know, based, I know, based on, I know, I don't, I don't know how much of a Nintendo guy Julian is, but Very. Um, the other thing, which may also be small, I don't know, depends on what you like. Um, but I'm also kind of geeking out about the recent Pokemon Diamond and Pearl remakes and eh, the Pokemon cares? Legends Arceus. That's, that's so what? small. That's so small. <laughs> well, hey, not everyone's a Pokemon guy, but wow. I'm, yeah, so I'm like totally Pokemon kidding. Diamond is like one of those big Pokemon games that stood out for me as a kid. Only, only Max can kick me from this, so <laughs> I, can, I can piss off. <laughs> this is I, this I'm is an allowed. inclusive space. <laughs> We <laughs> oh, okay, it's the big going. one. It's I've big never one. finished a Pokemon game. I, I played the first yeah. one, Red, and I've played a little. I don't think I've gotten past the tutorial of Sword and Ooh. Shield, and that's all the Pokemon I've played. <laughs> I, I I love it. I love seeing it. I love being a part of it. But I'm also not a part of it at all. The, the new yeah, Pokemon awesome. announcement were pretty awesome. I do have to say, and I hope that they do a good job. Uh, I game- will say, like. Game the, Freak is kind of starting to establish a bad <laughs> repertoire. So, yeah, they yeah. definitely on a like a graphical level, like Sword and Shield, definitely <laughs> was, was kind of subpar in that way. Um, but it does look like um, Legends Arceus is going to be a big step up for them, um, especially because they are the remakes of Diamond and Pearl. They're actually giving to another studio, and mm. the name of them escapes me at the moment. Um, mm. so Game Freak, it's all hands on deck for Legends Arceus, which based on their reveal trailer, there's, you can definitely see that there's, there's definitely still in development. Like they've got another year, but, um, they had some stuttering and that kind of thing, but mm-hmm. who hopefully that'll be fixed within a year, but uh, hopefully we'll see it's Game Freak. Mm. <laughs> right. They're not it particularly does, known yeah. for. It did that look like they were leaning pretty hard into that like Pokemon Go esque kind of thing, or Let's Go Pikachu. I think worth the exploring. Um, I don't know about like, that. I would say I, it leans guess, more toward the wild area of Sword yeah. and Shield. Like that was kind of like it's, their testing ground for it. Yeah, it seemed yeah. like they were kind of merging the two together. Mm-hmm. But 
Um, Maybe. I, I imagine you're still going to be able to grind Pokemon to level to level up, but um, yeah, it seems it seems like they'll still have like traditional battles in there and all that. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I do also want to say that Diamond and Pearl, specifically uh, Diamond, was the first Pokemon game that I ever beat on my own. So very nostalgic oh. for me. Heck what yeah. uh, uh, what generation of Pokemon is that? I think uh, it's four. fourth. That's oh, that's it. The Sinnoh region number four. Yeah. So what what isn't in that then? Because we're on like what eight or nine now? <laughs> Several uh, hundred Pokemon. No, <laughs> there's, I, a few, yeah. there's a few hundred that aren't in there. <laughs> yes. Sorry. That's let's, the, let's, the let's starters. Clarify, like, what's the what's the fifth generation starters that I should know that fifth aren't generation? in there? I don't um. I know it's the the fourth generation starters are Pip, Piplup, uh, Turtwig, Turtwig, and uh, Chimchar. 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 There we go. I was okay. I was blanking on Chimchar. I had to look it up. So, <laughs> oh, cheater! You had it right in front of you. I have only played the tutorials of two Pokemon games. Cheater! Cheater! Uh. But I already know I'm picking Piplup again. I always pick Piplup. So <laughs> ah, I'm a Turtwig guy. For life. Hell yeah. <laughs> I would yeah. know that I the last Pokemon that I like actually played through uh is Leaf Green and Fire Red. So on the, Those were the Game last... Boy? Yeah. Wow. That's the last that's the last Nintendo console that I owned was a Game Boy Advance SP. You're missing hey, out on a good, console, a good game. As far as Nintendo consoles go though, that's a really good one to have. Yeah, yeah. and I mean one. I I still pull it out every once in a while. Um, I do obviously the Wii U's the best one. <laughs> yeah, right. That was it sold the best. Um, we don't talk blew... about the Wii U. <laughs> <laughs> I personally love it. It was highly underappreciated, difficult to develop on. So it obviously was a yeah. very unsuccessful platform for them. Almost killed the company, but there's no way it almost killed Nintendo. <laughs> that company no. has been through so much. They've been a restaurant, a taxi service, a card making <laughs> company. There's nothing that can hey, don't kill forget them. the love they just hotels. pivot to something new. <laughs> <laughs> they took the term pivot to the most extreme. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, and now they, they have the Switch they, that's like one of the best selling platforms. And they survived. For the past year. They survived where Atari could not. Well, so, yeah, I miss you Atari sometimes. Sure. But also, they did treat their developers better than Atari did. <laughs> well, what? Atari also tried to what? sell the same yeah. games at a much lower right. quality for home consoles. Also, they didn't <laughs> encrypt any of their titles so that you could just make copies really easily. Yeah. I mean, Nintendo <laughs> did that a lot in the beginning. They copied yes. Atari at the wazoo. And they also <laughs> added credits to their games and game designers <laughs> instead of just like making it a Credit company game. game. Designers? Who is this? I know. I. <laughs> That's where everything took a turn for the worse. Game designers should just get, deserve no credit <laughs> there. <laughs> you are no longer John Schmo. You are now Atari. You are you are Atari. <laughs> we are Atari. <laughs> we are Atari. <laughs> to assimilate. Oh, I think it should be pretty clear that we all love game developers and think they deserve much more mm. respect. And mm -hmm. uh, be nicer to game developers. Yeah, <laughs> please. They're trying their best. Game developing Agreed. is hard. Yeah. So yeah, that was that was number two. The new that Pokemon. was yeah, those were both of mine. I guess they were bigger than I expected. We're like 14, oh. 15 minutes in. To be Sorry. fair, <laughs> to be fair is massive. So that's why I went second and with that one. <laughs> if it was just up to Talon and Max, it probably wouldn't have been as big. But I'm over here geeking out right here with you. <laughs> It's true. We're very. We're, I'm very happy you two are here. Honestly, yes. So let's like, let's get off the. Don't do me next because I'm also going to geek out about Nintendo stuff that you guys won't care about. Okay. But All right. Somebody well, else. Somebody else. Enough of my voice. Let's hear someone else. Should Max. I go, Talon? Yeah, okay. you can I also go. have two things. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start off with the thing that's controversial on Twitter, um, and I don't fully understand how it works. But um, I saw on Twitter today because uh, my partner is an artist and they're about to open their commission soon, hopefully. Um, and suddenly we see this thing trending on tick, uh, Twitter called tokenized tweets. And I don't know, I don't know what uh -oh. that is. I've never heard of Neither that. did we. And so I've been doing some understanding here. It's a, 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 a system in which 
you create they create this bot that can make a bitcoin out of a tweet essentially and then they can sell that bitcoin and the, hmm. the, the issue stems here is someone can make a Bitcoin of anybody else's tweet and then sell that and make a profit on it. So someone could make a Bitcoin of someone else's art and sell that Bitcoin. And now that person has that art that they can just publish, upload or whatever. And they're able to start stealing people's artwork off Twitter. And that was wild news to me as someone who still doesn't com fully comprehend Bitcoin or anything online well, that, to this extent. I feel like there's definitely some information missing there because uh, mm -hmm. you do like a, a, a coin um, and I don't know if it's going to be – is it a new type of cy uh, cyber currency or is it – So so what I saw is Bitcoin. it's supposed to be, but it's yeah, – the data that is being represented through that coin is the exact data for the artwork. So okay. it's like stealing the source code for that photo mm -hmm. so you can then have it anywhere and embed it anywhere. Yeah, which makes sense. I mean, people have been able to encode things into mm -hmm. images for a long time. Yeah. Um, that I is interesting. Know, yeah, a lot of artists and a lot of people are not happy to see this happen and people make a profit off it and have it be super easy. Um, and like with many things online, I've discovered it's there's always like a positive thing that then goes wrong, that someone abuses and then goes wrong. So I was trying to think, how is this positive? How does this work? And one of the main offenders from this that uh, that people are saying you got you just gotta block them, make sure they don't steal your artwork and that stuff. Uh, on their Twitter page, it says if Twitter can take down your tweets, are they truly yours? And I think that I followed that, and I believe from what I understand is this is stemming from people uh, not wanting things to be deleted and they're wanting to save their tweets and that stuff from being deleted or anything like that, or being taken down from Twitter, which is a whole nother issue in itself, right? Where <laughs> it, Twitter has a right to do that. This isn't a pub. This isn't a government company. This is a, it is a, a private, private company with yeah, their own rules. They can do that. So, so we don't end up like parlor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't know. If you, if we'll see what happens with this, honestly, if this is the case and it's like stealing people's IPs and that stuff, Someone's going to take it too far and steal like a musician's tweet or something. And then suddenly we have the whole like musician's guild coming in and to Twitter and being like, hey, mm -hmm. you can't do this. You know that, right? And the whole restructure and whatnot. But yeah, thought I that was there, interesting. And there's crazy a news. Lot, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot to unpack there. I'd have to, I'll have to do some more research on that. The good mm -hmm. news about this is uh, the tokenizedtweets.com, which is their website, mm -hmm. basically has. Uh, instructions on how to tokenize a tweet and then also uh, a button to issue a takedown request. Like, oh. did someone tokenize your copyrighted art slash photography? Submit a takedown request. And that's literally all there is on the website. Okay, like, that's there interesting. There is nothing but instructions. Um, there's a login, I guess, and takedown requests. Okay, that's interesting. My phone must have bugged because I didn't see that, but when I it's right at the very bottom. Like, it's, it's there, so they they seem to be policing themselves, which is also a very good thing, I feel. <sighs> Poor it, guys, that though. That is a weird <laughs> thing. They yeah. definitely did not consider this before making their product. Oh, exactly. They I mean, did not think about not. this. Uh, I mean, a prime example of that is that Netflix uh, documentary, uh, the social issue, the social network issue, or whatever it's called, where they interview tech people and they interview the guy who invented the like button on Facebook. And he's like, it was meant to share joy. We did not expect it to grow into something in which like people are considering suicide because they don't have enough likes. Mm -hmm. Like every yeah. time something is introduced to the internet, it seems to corrupt itself in a way or go bad or someone mm -hmm. abuses it, obviously. Mm -hmm. But anyways, that's, that was the first thing. I don't fully understand it, but as we, we talked about that just now, and it was all interesting. The next thing I want to talk about, though, is a Kickstarter. And Talon, it's a dice. Yeah. <laughs> what makes this special, though? <laughs> what makes this special, though, it is an RGB balanced dice. Okay. It is a <laughs> dice that has RGB lights in it, Bluetooth connectivity, so it can connect to an app. You can roll wow. it, and it can you can customize it recognizes – sorry, I'm getting overwhelmed myself here. Let me um, <laughs> find the Kickstarter here. Can you but, drop the link in chat so I can see it? Yeah. Yeah, please. Let me let me do that right now, actually. But while I'm talking about this, it is a dice that he put a circuit in there 
with RGB lights, right? The dice also recognizes uh, what side it is on, what side it's rolled on. And it is fully mm. customizable on top of that. So you can add, it, they, it's open source code, so you can add what kind of light effects you want for certain numbers rolled. What kind of sound, if it's connected to a speaker, if it, like, if you roll it and it gets a D20, do you, and you get a natural 20, do you want it to go, do. yeah, or do you want just someone screaming bloody murder, you know? Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> roll, yeah, yeah it, I just, like, put uh, Shelly's scream from The Shining. <laughs> exactly, there you go. <laughs> Every time you roll a 20. Here we go. Here's, okay, I'm posting the link now. Um but what was interesting to me about this is like, you know, it's always a little sketchy and that stuff about dice on Kickstarter. And especially with something like this, yeah. um, I saw it through a dice maker that I follow on YouTube and I've trust very deeply. And cause he concentrates on like unique dice that aren't made for fair play and also fair play dice. He concentrates on both of those and his friend started this company and something interesting they're doing is they're, making it as balanced as possible. They keep showing graphs and they keep updating it to be like, hey, here's how uh, our ratios look compared to the normal like, dice. Yeah. Like, um, oh, what's the acrylic dice set? Chess X dice. Chess X. And Chess the X super like science garbage. dice. <laughs> and the, like the super, super science dice that are made to be super even no matter what. And they, they keep getting, they're very close, honestly, already with this. But um, it's, it's just, it's just a, a pretty dice and B I really like the Bluetooth connectability because they worked with roll 20 and now you can roll a dice and it'll update that roll on roll 20. So the I physical think, dice purists wow. have finally have an option for playing online. Exactly. And then you can also like the, like roll 20 allows you can have it add your modifiers for certain attacks and that stuff. So all you do is click the attack you're doing, roll your physical dice and it works. And he's making a full dice set of these. Yeah, I haven't uh, seen anything past the D20 and D6 yet, but he was just funded within six hours of making it. And that's where things get sketchy. Because exactly. I, it's incredible. I love this idea. I think they're brilliant. But I would rather buy them from the manufacturer than exactly. support a Kickstarter uh, where like, your name can get lost in the what? I'm assuming mm -hmm. hundreds of thousands of people that are supporting this. It's um, got I, it's got ninety six hundred backers and it's seven times surpassed its goal. Yep. It's sitting at one point three million dollars mm. backed. Lord. They also have a successful design for every yeah uh, dice, I, and they also have a really classy looking recharge. Key, like, I went uh, I went yeah. to for the whole their, set. Their mm. website, so mm. I'm looking at their so website pretty. instead of they they did the say. Other that they're going to they do want this to last for a long time and they do want it to be out there so they will make it like you know you can buy it from them eventually uh you don't need it it's not a kickstarter exclusive it's not any of that stuff another cool thing though about it uh since it's this dice maker's friend his friend the or sorry the dice maker that i watch rubinator i'll just say his name he since he makes dice his friend offered and told him that they're planning to sell the core of those dice the electronic cores yeah. for people to then make their own dice with them like make That's their own really mold cool. stuff, which is awesome and i love that and i love how they're open source software and how they just want this to be the coolest dice on the market honestly the, the share with people and it's sketchy but it i'm just too excited for it not to just want to get into it their their website seems legitimate enough that I, I imagine that this will be a successful product. I, I would just be concerned with like shipping dates and uh, I mean their battery life looks like it's pretty good. It says something like ten thousand or a thousand rolls. It's also mm -hmm. rechargeable easily through yeah. uh, whatever that special magic technology is. So yeah, it has not, a it has wireless well, charging. Electricity is magic, so and mm. true. <laughs> yeah. True. And I will say I love their little machine test video. I watched that and it's very I I I thought it was very clever. I found it very interesting. Uh and then they have their graph that shows like how many times a certain yeah. dice rolls that side and how it matches up to competitors like Game Science, which is super smooth, and Chess X, which is 
Uh, mm, a not, little not, bit leaning uh, toward the sixes for some reason. Yeah, that's what it looks like. <laughs> it, it leans toward like three, six, and then it jumps to twelve, and then eighteen. It like it likes those numbers. It seems like the, I, these these do look freaking awesome, um, and I really hope they're successful. But it's probably something that I'll end up like waiting on until their mm-hmm. website is up, and then I can just buy them from them or something. Exactly. And as I, much as I want to be a dice gremlin. I don't have yeah. the money to be a dice gremlin. There, there is also have, that. <laughs> yeah, I have no money. I woke up today with zero dollars in my bank account. I'm like, oh well, that's how it goes. And then this show, <laughs> it's 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 face at me, and it's like you can donate thirty dollars, and then you get at least one of the dice. And I'm like, yeah, why why would you do that to me? Why would you put the exact allotted allowance I give myself a month in my face like this <laughs> when I don't have it anymore? Ugh. But I'm a dice goblin. I love making things. I have a 3D printer that I'm going to hopefully get working again and hopefully start making my own dice and dice for other people. And so Ooh. hearing about this and knowing they're going to sell just the components of it, I'm just excited for it and love it. And yeah, it looks like if, it looks like if you were to back it to purchase, like if you did the $35 pledge for one die, mm-hmm. you wouldn't get it till March of 2022. And that's yeah, an estimate. Exactly. And so yep. you just have to think, like, do you trust these guys are you willing to wait that long exactly and i'm or do you just kind of want to watch it like talon's mentioning classic yeah. kickstarter uh dilemma yeah, yeah. Yep. and i'm biased because i followed this dice maker rubinator for two years now and he's he's genuine about everything he does he's a, he's a trustworthy source but i'm also the guy that followed him for two years so to me he's built that trust with me mm. um but it, like like everyone's saying it's always good to be cautious with kickstarters always 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 uh, I also have a bunch of Kickstarters that aren't supposed to come in for like another year or yeah, two. I, I want to have so much for Christmas. I'll be honest. <laughs> I've got a I've got a couple that are um, supposed to come in November this year. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of I them have... is the Lord of the Rings. Yeah. If you're wondering um, what that is, listen to our RPG. last episode of this yeah. podcast. <laughs> Talked about that for a minute. I was a little static about that. Don't I still yeah. don't I still don't fully understand what's going on with the rules, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm I'm still really excited. Uh, the developers developed the the game style of it based off of the genre or the title that they're making it for, rather than mm-hmm. uh, trying to build a one size fits all uh, style. So, um, I mean, another like this is a a pseudo horror story um, of Kickstarters. I have a Kickstarter. I'm going to it now. That it was the it was the second Kickstarter I ever backed. Um, it, it was supposed to be delivered fall of last year, and I started it summer or not? So, yeah, summer of last year. And they have been giving updates, which is nice. And it's I haven't requested a, a refund because they've been doing that a lot. They've been getting a lot of updates. Um. The last update, he said that it, all the art is in now because his problem was he had artists making this for mm-hmm. him and they weren't going through. One of them actually had COVID for like a full year and battled it apparently. But still, it was like a little sketch and a little like, mm, where are we going? And he kept promising a date and then having to push that, push that, push that. Yep. Um, but now we've reached a point where it's I, I I'm confident enough that's going to happen, but also be prepared for that. Understand that if you do go to a Kickstarter, A, it might not be real. Always be cautious of those. And B, don't expect it anytime soon. This is like a yeah. far in the... Ex, in, expect investing in something and then forgetting about it. And then suddenly you're at your home and you're like, whoa, what's this cool right? gift I got? I do yeah. appreciate it when they continually give back like uh, updates and stuff because mm-hmm. um, I backed the Larian Studios Divinity Original Sin 2 board game. Mm-hmm. And uh, like that was supposed to be something that was going to ship last year. But then COVID happened. They're like, yeah, it's not going to happen. We need to play test a bunch still. Um, and all the expansions that were unlocked in the Kickstarter uh, have – like made that grow so they have to do more play testing they have more items to be like uh be using but the final box has been put together and is in its final round of play testing um so we're close we're very close to that uh that goal of it being shipped out so 
but man, I- I'm so ready for my for my stuff to get here. <laughs> right. So one of the only like Kickstarter things I've ever gotten behind was um, Shovel Knight, the Yacht Club games. Nice. And that's and that they, that's probably when I think of like examples of great Kickstarter results, like mm-hmm. following through, like Shovel Knight is huge. Just like and, and software, they continue to provide, yeah, like soft, yeah. like the free software updates with it, and you got basically like three full games out of it. Yeah, and just over time, they just oh, yeah. did more and more and more and more, and like it's super successful. It's probably one of the most popular indies ever. Shovel Knight is a very good game. And, very, very and, good. and I think the nature of a video game is easier to have on something like Kickstarter because uh, you can have things like an early access where the yeah. the playable game is released to say, hey, guess what? This is a real thing. We are working on it. You can taste the results here. Mm-hmm. Um, it's harder still- with physical things that need to be shipped out. Yeah, that takes you- time. Whereas something like software, you can just, here's some codes. Download your trial or whatever yeah. maybe mm-hmm. so you know That's everything has the pros and cons yeah. Um, yeah. But, but inevitably kickstarter is awesome because then you can you're crowdfunded mm-hmm. uh rather than having to rely on someone with a, just a butt ton of money shoveling money, shoveling it at you yeah and like yeah you know have their own priorities and something so no I, I i i think it's a good idea um it's just you sometimes wish it, it could be done better <laughs> yeah and like a, yeah. like i said earlier anything on the internet it has good intentions and can get corrupted very easily or people just abuse yeah. it and i've i mean i took a uh my one of the only business classes i took at the u which was awful by the way it was very bad it was <laughs> no, entrepreneurship not gonna, not gonna be a business major now huh well, no. like it was called entrepreneurship, and I thought, okay, we're going to learn about like how you balance things, what like programs are there for you for like budgeting for employees and that stuff. No, it was think tanks. We watched Shark Tank for three class periods, uh, oh, dear. and then we talked about we talked about Kickstarter and how he kickstarted something and it hasn't arrived. And I remember looking at it and I'm like, dude, that's Photoshop. That's a, that's that's all fake. There's no way that's real. And I could tell you as a, someone who builds things, you can't build that yet. And he's like, I'm still waiting for it though. And like, who knows? Oh. Danger. It was so, it, it was, it was a bad class. classes are awesome, aren't they? We spent a class period. He wanted to spend the whole class period about Elon Musk's tweet, which was what he got almost fired for from his company for, which was yep. the 420 tweet. And he's like, what do you think this means? And all this other stuff. And I'm sitting there laughing. And all the other kids are sitting there like, they know what it means. And he looks at me, he's like, why are you laughing? I'm like, that means weed, sir. That means weed. It's like, it's like when someone says 69, nice, I have to say nice. Yeah, it, you're, <laughs> Pata, it's the rules. Like, Elon, they're the rules of the internet. Elon Musk exactly. is just a meme lord. And, and that, that mm-hmm. is all. <laughs> I was just blown away. And like some of the kids apparently in the class either pretended they didn't know it, most likely, or they legitimately didn't know it. And I'm like, are you all crazy? <laughs> you know man what i don't know that I can't. class i'm so <laughs> angry that i took that class as a waste of a class it's always weird when you're in that class with all of the kids that like don't fit into like your realm your major and i'm pretty you- sure i was the oldest kid in that class too which was a weird <laughs> feeling i was in my fourth year yeah. of college and i was still the oldest kid in that class everyone there was like a freshman and i was like oh no that's all oh that's no also- Wonderful. Yep. I looked at you. I looked at me like, oh, you all look alive and ready for the future. I remember yeah, when like, I was there. You guys look like you're you're so happy to be here. <laughs> None of you have paid rent and it shows. <laughs> None oh, of you have God. had to do full time school and full time work. Well, now yeah. that we spent another quarter and episode <laughs> um, geek out on a tirade about Kickstarter. Um yep. <laughs> Well, that, that that was your second thing, right, Matt? Yeah, that, yeah that, that's that all. Was. That's all. Of it. I'm done. First one was the, that was your way. first. I would say, let's go to this hat. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, do you, my mine is short. Um, I I like Julian has said at the beginning of this episode. This was kind of a slow week, um, which is nice. Uh, but I have uh, in. in you know, okay, uh, let's see if I can get my thoughts together here. Um, because of a class, I have rediscovered my love of text-based adventures. 
Um, and I've been playing through Zork and Zork 2. And, Classic. Yeah, and Colossal Cave Adventure, because that was like the original. Um, and just some other text-based adventures that have been released. And, man, they are so good. They're fantastic. They're, they're so much fun to play. I, I Zork um, is one of my favorites, mostly because of Infocom. The developers at Infocom, which sadly no longer exists, um, I think someone bought them. It was like Activision or something, and then they dissolved the the company. Yeah, um, sounds about right for Activision. Yeah, yeah right. It sounds about right. Um, but just the the tongue in cheek humor that exists around the entire like all of the adventures you can go on in Zork and Zork Two, and they have other titles as well. They have some that are set in space. They have some that are on a on a on a ship uh and th it's just it makes me smile every time i love uh going into these new settings and drawing a map um and uh, i i find it very uh like relaxing to to play these games and i enjoy the aspect of not knowing what to expect um which is something that i feel like a lot of modern titles have kind of gotten into like the big triple A titles. Um, you know, they can still be amazing games and stuff, but it's really easy to turn on a mini map and a compass, and then you know exactly where to go and you can skip past a bunch of stuff. Uh, and that's something that I miss from the, the days of like these text adventures and the old open world RPGs like Morrowind and uh, stuff like that. So. I, I'm I'm going back to the roots of gaming and enjoying it, and I will note that uh, I was born in '95, so like a lot of these text-based adventures are far before my time. Mm -hmm. So it's not a nostalgia thing. Um, it's it's really just they're enjoyable games that I think everyone should give a chance. But it is a little bit of a learning curve. And be uh, aware that some of them are baloney. Yeah, yeah. On baloney. I put. I remember. I think. I. I think. I took the class that you're now taking, uh, Talon. Uh, I also had to do those games, and I chose the Cthulhu one on the Activision app that you can get on the App Store, yeah. which was very fun. And I got very far on it actually, and I was very excited. And then I looked up a tutorial. Um, and there's a point in the game where you had to pick. You can pick up a soda bottle, mm -hmm. and there's a microwave. And I just was like, microwave the soda bottle. Just because. Right. I was like, can I do that? And I was like, yeah, right? yes, that's, I have a glowing soda bottle. And it's super weird. <laughs> and I'm like, cool. And let me do that weird thing. Turns out if you don't do that, though, which I discovered after my six playthroughs where I just kept skipping to that part and not microwaving it. Uh, if you don't do that, you die. You have to yeah. do that. Otherwise, you will never win the game. And some of these text ventures are kind of like that, where if you miss a detail at the very beginning, there, yeah, it's impossible to win. Certainly. Yeah, and that is something you come across. But that's why, like, Zork and, and the Infocom titles were so good, is because oh, you, yeah. you, when you play them, you just feel like the developers had fun creating it. Oh, um, yeah, they absolutely. Had a lot of fun writing the story and just mapping out this giant adventure. So, mm -hmm. what was the other game? I think it's called Fantasy. That's an app. That's uh, like an a, app a take I on that. It's like a take on that kind of genre, except they they give you assets and that stuff, so you don't have to actually draw it out and everything. But it is oh yeah okay exactly like that, and I... it's, it's exactly like a text adventure. But they took away the the typing part, which also mm. works for me because I can't spell. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, Planet Fall is is one of the other Infocom games, and Galaxy, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. They did one of those. Best. Um, Leather Goddess of Phobos, which is one that is on my list to play. That one's supposed to be pretty good. So it's hilarious. Yeah, it's genuinely the funniest one out there. And so it's, it's all tongue in cheek, sarcastic humor, and right up my alley. And I, I've just been thoroughly enjoying playing through them. So that's what I'm geeking out about. Stuff from the '80s. <laughs> I love it. Oh yeah. Also, I'm reading. I'm reading Ready Player One. So like, it's all kind of. Uh, it's all kind of going together, you know? It's all these 80s <laughs> things. I think I'm going to start watching some sitcoms from the 80s again. Um, I think MASH <laughs> is 80s. I'll watch some MASH. I'm just going to go back in time, guys, okay? Do it. <laughs> Have fun. Utah's obsessed with the 80s. I don't know why. 
I, uh, the eighties were apparently great. I, I couldn't tell you all the reasons why, but I Just have watched my... that one episode of WandaVision where they're in the eighties. Yeah. Right. Oh, such a good show. That was, it, it ended really well, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's an but before we get there, Julian. Yeah. Wow. Julian. Save us. Save us. <laughs> so no spoilers. Um, and we're going to go back to the world of Nintendo. And I don't know oh, if you. Mason, uh, I don't know if you also share this love of mine, but uh, we were talking about the Wii U and there was one new Nintendo IP that came out on the Wii U that has survived. And that is Splatoon. And it yes. is one of yes. my favorite games. <laughs> yes. And Splatoon 3 has been announced oh. for release in 2022 or 2023. No, 2022. 2022. Mm-hmm. And it's hurting me that I have to wait. <laughs> I am uh. such a huge fan what? of Splatoon. Uh, so, okay. Um, well, I get, get ready to I... wait. I'm waiting for Metroid. <laughs> Yeah, right. Screw you. <laughs> uh, we'll get there, Max. We'll get there. I want Metroid. <laughs> Please. Um, why? Why do you need a third title yet? Because from what I understand, they've been doing a lot with Splatoon two to make it like expanding so, that stuff. Here's the thing. I in between played. Splatoon one and Splatoon two, mm-hmm. they changed up the formula a lot. Uh, like. They changed how the game, with a lot of very subtle tweaks, they changed the core of the game. And if I'm perfectly honest, I really liked the way Splatoon 1 did some things better than Splatoon 2. And what it looks like to me is that they're doing something similar, again, where they're not just making a new entry they're really building off of what they've already established. Okay. And like, they're really doing a lot with it. Um, Splatoon's interesting because um, they Nintendo puts on the Splatfest events. Um, yeah, and which, the very last Splatfest um, that they do um, has an effect on the next game that they release. <laughs> so so Splatoon 1 true. obviously... Yeah, so Splatoon 1 released on the Wii U, which obviously didn't have a very large player base. <laughs> Um, me being, I like Splatoon, but I wouldn't, I'm not like, I don't jump into it all the time. Um, so Splatoon 2 is almost like a Splatoon 1.5 where they've improved on things that they uh, started with the Wii U. Um, they eventually released the Octo expansion, which was supposed to be super good. I never had a chance to play it. It's so good. I, I, I anticipate that Splatoon 3 will have, um, more content like the Octo expansion, um uh, continue to splatoon expand you and... already had a ton of that like mm-hmm. if you bought mm-hmm. splatoon and you didn't have nintendo online their online service you would have bought a full game without any of the nintendo online like yeah and that's not even including the dlc expansion so, so there, there is like a single player to yes splatoon. okay it's very good in my opinion I, yeah. I have very, never I have never fun, seen the single player Splatoon. I've only seen multiplayer. <laughs> the single player is genuinely fun. I I played some of it and I watched my friend play it and it's 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 very fun. The bosses are very satisfying to fight. That's I'm excited awesome. for this game. And one thing I noticed with it, and a lot of people on Twitter noticed with the the three, is they got rid of the gender option. Yeah. Which oh. Was very interesting, and I thought that was very cool. Then they just have hairstyles now. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Because it didn't really matter. And yeah. mm-hmm. I'll be real. I always played as a girl. Yeah. yeah. I just like the hairstyle yeah. better. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That, that, that's the thing, right, with this game is I love this game for its style. I've, I've, I've played it. It's, it's great gameplay mechanics. They actually, the movement controls with the, the guns they have are actually really fun. I thought so I would like it, but I got used to it. The yeah. gyro controls in Splatoon are perfect. Yeah, they're I never really great. thought. I never thought that I, a a, a a somewhat purist of video <laughs> games, have been accused of being a purist. The Wii tainted us. The Wii gave us the bad taste, and the Splatoon showed us what it could be and what it should be. Um, but also, like, the style of the game. Like, the fact that the shops always alternate and that stuff, it gave me a reason to kind of jump back in every once in a while online, because I love 
it's char- character customization. I I'll buy a game if it if that's the whole game. If it's just character customizations, I'll just buy a game like that. I genuinely <laughs> it, it enjoy keeps that. It, it keeps it fresh, if you will. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and that that it, like rolls uh-huh. through it all. It's just it's just so good, and I love the I just love character customization and the style of that game has a very good style, very consistent, and I'm also very excited for number three. Yes. Well. That's it, all. It seems like they've all been executed extremely well, so I imagine it's going to be fantastic. Uh, and I will let you know if I play it. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. It's a good one. One critique I have on number two is they need more uh, co-op modes. That was that was probably the funnest thing to watch and play for me with my friends was the co-op mode. Fair. There was you against AI in a horde mode. I mean, like, zombies. It's addictive. What I... What's I the sport? love What's the Splatoon. Um, that's a good question. <laughs> I, I, I'm uh, trying, trying to remember now. Or are there you the is. humans? Are you the humans cool? destroyed the Earth because of global warming, yeah, and then cephalopods yeah. evolved to be better than humans, but mm-hmm. also not that great. So, but there's like a war between the squids way and the way octopus. Too obsessed, way too obsessed with paint. <laughs> yeah, it's a light. It's like at, on the surface, it's like lighthearted, but then when you start to think about everything around it, it's a post-apocalyptic world they're in. Which, yeah, you know, from like, the from the trailer all, of Splatoon three, it looks like they're really leaning into that for this next one. Yeah, that mm. sounds like all of Zelda. <laughs> True. It's usually pretty lighthearted on the surface, but is way darker once you start <laughs> kind of thinking about what that universe really means. So yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you everybody for listening. Uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you guys discovered something new. And uh, be sure to listen to our past podcasts and catch us next week on Geek, Geek Out. Out.